All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be starting a new series where we talk about how to do basic computer maintenance on your at-home personal computer to keep it running almost like new until you eventually rebuild it or upgrade it. And doing computer maintenance has a lot less to do with, you know, cleaning out the, your computer itself from things like dust, which you should still do, but it's more about managing what is on your computer in form of files, software, and extra garbledy gook that you might want to clean out to keep it running like new. So this will take the form of like a three-part series where we talk about cleaning out old files, going through and checking for viruses and other greeblies that might be slowing down your machine, and then defragging the whole thing so that your computer's brain knows where everything is and it consolidates things so it can run a bit faster when it's trying to pull up, say, a movie or the latest memes that you downloaded off of Imgur. So to start us out, we're going to be focusing on the deletion of old, unused files from the computer using a tool called CCleaner, which is available for free from the software company Piriform. They make a number of great tools for doing maintenance and cleanup on your computer, including a defragging software and a file recovery software. And we're going to just jump in here. Once you've got it downloaded and installed, we're going to pop into the cleaner tab. Most of what you do in the software is going to primarily take place in either the cleaner tab or the registry tab with maybe one or two things you want to do with the tools like uninstalling unused software directly from inside CCleaner. So inside the cleaner tab, this is going to go through, we're going to find all the temporary files that are stored on your computer that you might not be using anymore and delete them because they'll be hogging up space. And honestly, the computer's not always good about going through and cleaning these out automatically when it doesn't need them anymore. These include things like your temporary internet search files, like your internet cache where your browser downloads website data so it can load them faster if you visit one of them frequently. You go through and delete your internet history, your saved cookies that talk to websites and do things like store password and session data. All of this stuff you can pretty much clean out on the regular. Although do note if you delete things like cookies and saved sessions and all that stuff, you'll have to re-log into everything like your email. So if you need to do stuff later and you don't want to like constantly mess around with logging back into everything, I'd leave this for later. We'll just go ahead and do the exact same thing for Internet Explorer. And you can also delete a lot of unused files that are stored in Windows, like the Windows Explorer, which is what you use to browse around the files on your computer. I'm going to go ahead and let it delete the recent documents list because I don't really need that. All the programs that need or I'd want to use that in have their own separate systems, so I can let that just get deleted. Same with recently run programs in the start menu. I'm going to leave alone things like taskbar jump list because I don't remember what that is, but it's worth noting that CCleaner has a detailed information section of their website in case you're curious what each of these is. So if you don't know what it is and you're kind of concerned you're deleting something important, feel free at any point to stop. Go look it up to make sure you're not removing something important or potentially borking something up and then come back and you can toggle it on or off as necessary. Uh, network passwords, I'm going to leave that alone because I just don't feel like those need to be deleted at home. I might do that if this was a computer that I took to like work a lot or something like a laptop. Then, of course, under system files, it makes sense when you're trying to free up space that you'd want to empty your recycling bin. That's kind of a no brainer for a lot of us. When we start to throw away files, we don't keep track of what gets deleted permanently right then and there versus move to the recycling bin. So it's a good thing to let this just do that. So whatever is already in there just gets deleted. Uh, temporary system files, your clipboard files which is whatever you do in like when you hit command C to copy something, it hovers in cyberspace till you paste it. That's what's stored inside of your clipboard memory dumps from things like blue screens, check disc file fragments from when the system was checking over to make sure your hard drives were behaving log files, error reporting and DNS cache are all things that you can delete. 
Uh, things like thumbnail cache up here are just your computer generating little thumbnails of whatever your files look like when you open them up. A lot of times when you delete old files, it doesn't delete all the thumbnails that were associated with them, so it's a good idea to clean those out. And the system should regenerate any cache files that it needs upon like starting up whatever software or running Windows again as you go. Then you got some advanced stuff down here, like if you've got important financial data, you can go down here and you can wipe the free space. That way, if you had like your social security number, a picture of your driver's license, some of your banking records on your computer, and you were afraid that someone was going to get a hold of it and try to steal some of that information, you could wipe your drive directly from inside CCleaner, either just the free space or an entire drive, and then just nuke it completely from orbit. Applications tab is very similar. It just deletes old temporary files from things like your secondary browsers. I just ran this, so I'm gonna leave my Google Chrome alone. Again, because sometimes logging back into stuff constantly is kind of a pain in the butt. And then you can just delete whatever temporary information is from these other programs. And if you wanna save stuff because you're afraid it'll delete like your preferences from say Photoshop or Illustrator, you could just leave that alone and untick that from the sidebar here. Then once you've got everything done, you can hit analyze and CCleaner will go through and scan all of these folders to tell you exactly how much junk would be deleted if you were to run the cleaner right now. And here we have, I got like a hundred gigs worth of stuff practically that can be removed from my computer right now. Looks like most of it's in my recycling bin, which is another good example of why you should try to empty that regularly. So I'm just gonna look through this list. Doesn't look like I'm gonna delete anything important, so I'm just gonna run the cleaner which will permanently delete all of these files, and then bingo bango, I will have a much smoother running computer once I'm done with the process of cleaning out files and then defragmenting everything. So this could take a couple of minutes to run through the process of deleting all of these old files. It shouldn't, unless you have a slower computer, take more than say, I don't know, five-ish minutes, maybe in extreme cases I could go up to like 10, but I think when I was running it for the first time after like five or six months, it only took me like two minutes. And here you can see it deleted this much stuff and it actually found a bunch of cookies on my computer that were tracking my behavior online and went through and deleted them. In fact, it probably is a whole bunch of other stuff built into this that it's deleting too. So the next tab that we're gonna explore is the registry. What is the registry? You can think of it like the spine of Windows. Everything that you install on the computer, everything you do, in some way interfaces with the registry, like the kind of controlling backbone for the entire thing, the information highway. And sometimes when you delete stuff, install stuff, upgrade stuff, update stuff, and remove stuff, uh, it kind of creates errors from leftovers that are attached to the registry. And we're going to go ahead and scan for these just to make sure that we delete anything that uh, might be building up and causing errors or causing our computer to run slow. I run this fairly often, so this isn't a particularly long list, but for some people out there that, you know, have been using their computer for a good while and have never done this, this might be pretty long. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit selected, or bleh, I'm gonna hit fix selected issues and CCleaner will pop open this little warning saying, hey, do you want to make a backup of your settings in case something breaks? I've never had a situation where anything broke when I hit and ran the registry repair service in here. If you're concerned because your computer has been like blue screening recently or has been throwing errors, I might encourage you to do so. But for the most part, for most people's purposes, there should be no issue. This is just a fair warning ahead of time. I have heard of stuff happening. I've never met anyone that's had this happen to, so take it with a grain of salt. So I'm not going to back anything up, and I'm just gonna hit fix all selected issues. That's done now. I can move on to the next step, which is really just going through stuff like uh, browser plugins and startup files to see if there's anything in here that I want to delete or remove. This is actually kind of handy because it's in one little place, I can go through to make sure there's no bloatware on my computer that I might need to delete 
Like, let's say I installed a free piece of software and it came with like a free McAfee install, but I hate McAfee and I just didn't remember to disable it. I can go through here, find it, and then remove it, and then free up some more space that way. Similarly, you can adjust your startup files, like what starts on launch of Windows in case like your computer starts really slow, you can turn some of this stuff off. Like I turned off the QuickTime task and Facebook game room when I was doing some reviews on it would use to start up, so I disabled that too. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can disable or enable as you like, or you can actually just delete it from this list and section altogether. Similarly, you can analyze your disk for things like duplicate files or, you know, space you could find, you know, go through and find space that you could free up because there's like a big file somewhere, like a movie that you forgot you downloaded that you'd want to delete. And then you can find duplicates, restore your system from a previous backup or completely nuke one of your hard drives because, again, it had personal information on it that you might not want somebody who maybe you're going to sell it to a friend. You don't know what they're going to do with it. Just pretty much to be on the safe side, I'd go ahead and wipe the drive because there's a lot of really fancy recovery programs that can do a wonderful job of pulling data off of even the best wiped drives. You can do like a super nuke of this thing right here with 35 passes. Run that a couple of times and you're pretty much golden. And that's pretty much all the stuff that CCleaner does. There's some other data in here, like deleting cookies one at a time from your browsers, files to include or exclude from being deleted by CCleaner. And if you want to pay for Pro, you can do things like do some scheduling to let it run automatically in the background or do fancy advanced smart cleaning things. I just run this once every three to four months. I really wouldn't worry about buying a premium license, but if you wanted to, you certainly could upgrade for how much is it, like 20-ish bucks? Yeah, it's like 24 bucks when it's not on slight sale. So that's basically how you use CCleaner to clean up junk from your computer. After you did this, I would actually launch your Windows File Explorer and go browsing around your computer to see what's taking up space and delete it. And I'll also be going over a couple of tools that let you scan your computer and see visually what might be taking up space. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those below. And until next time, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.